take a few minutes to ask some questions as well. Mr. Goldfoot, um, I've heard you speak about how the past several years has seen fewer IP-related cases brought by DOJ. Um, the fact that the uh, Protecting Lawful Streaming Act of 2020, uh, which I was pleased to see enacted, uh, has only been uh, used to conclusion once. Is that your testimony? We have announced, I believe, one case where someone was sentenced under that act. What resources or authorities does the DOJ believe it lacks at this point to enforce criminal copyright piracy laws effectively? Thank you for the question. So um, enforcing criminal, uh, going after streaming sites specifically, uh, which is the target of Protecting Lawful Streaming Act, uh, is a very difficult lift investigatively, yes, but also in terms of securing the necessary foreign cooperation, it's quite difficult. Um, so, you know, for some of the streaming sites we're talking about, I don't want to say their name in order to give them publicity, but you probably know which one I'm referring to, the location of the servers, location of the domain name registration, location of the individuals responsible are all outside the United States. And they've attempted to locate themselves in places where they believe that their local law enforcement will not follow uh, US, uh, US legal process in terms of getting at them. How do we approach such a situation? I think first, it's, uh, there's no substitute for slowly over time building appropriate law enforcement relationships with our international partnerships, coming to common understanding, helping each other out in investigations, uh, providing case-based mentoring and so on as that proceeds. Uh, I think separate from that, uh, given the profusion of these sites and the amount of streaming occurring, um, as the amount of crime increases, it's, uh, it's helpful if we can increase our capacity to address it at the same time. Okay. Back in December, this subcommittee held a hearing on digital copyright piracy in the film and television industry, and at that hearing we heard testimony about a notorious foreign pirate site, F Movies which the Motion Picture Association testified averages 98 million users a month, with 33% of the traffic coming from the United States. We saw a demonstration showing how easy it was to access high quality copies of American movies and television shows advertised using the studio's copyrighted cover art and organized by title, genre, season, and episode. It also used an interface highly similar to legitimate streaming services. The US Chamber estimates these sites cost the US economy at least 29 billion and lost revenue annually. U.S. intellectual property rights holders referred F movies to the IPR Center five years ago in 2019, and HSI brought in Vietnamese law enforcement in early 2021. A couple of years ago, HSI believed that Vietnamese law enforcement was wrapping up the investigation and close to making arrests, but since then, the case seems to have stalled numerous times. In the meantime, this streaming piracy site dedicated to infringing content continues to see over 160 million visits per month, a third of which traffic still comes from the United States. So can you speak to the challenges of working with international law enforcement on prosecuting streaming piracy cases and with Vietnamese law enforcement specifically regarding F movies? Thank you, too. I assume the question is directed to me, sir. Yes. Uh, so thank you for the question. So, uh, of course, longstanding policy prevents me from commenting about uh, or confirming or denying the existence of any particular investigation. I think, however, your question is quite astute in pointing out the difficulties that we have in uh, going after streaming sites or foreign defendants when they're located in jurisdictions where you're having challenges dealing with them. Um, I think that uh, Increasingly, we see this as an issue not solely for the Department of Justice, but administrative-wide, looking also as part of a foreign policy and other ways to address the problem. Mr. Ball, Mr. Lord, do you have anything you want to add to that? I will say, sir, that yes, our relationship with the MPA and this case and many other cases, um, the problem that we face, as mentioned earlier, is shifting the jurisdictions shifting the sites, having the trained investigators to work those cases. So we've partnered with the MPA and with the RAA and with one of our key partners, the National Cyber Forensic Training Alliance in Pittsburgh to create a digital piracy training program, uh, both for the investigators and for inspectors and for attorneys as well. Um, we do face the same international challenges from an investigative standpoint. 
Uh, HSI has uh, HSI offices in those countries working with their law enforcement, but we share the, the concern and the frustration from DOJ as well. So Lord, uh, nothing further to add, sir. Okay. Thank you. I'll ask one more question of Mr. Goldfoot. I've been concerned that the Biden DOJ has had recent significant losses in cases, including the case against Georgia Tech researcher G. Kun Chang. Mr. Chang is accused of collaborating with sanctioned PRC telecommunications company ZTE, assisting Chinese nationals applying for visas to claim to be students at Georgia Tech. And instead of attending Georgia Tech, the Chinese nationals traveled to the U.S. to work for ZTE. Um, Mr. Goldfoot, uh, despite these allegations, how many of the 10 counts against Mr. Chang were recently dismissed by the federal judge? Thank you for the question. I'm not sure that that case was done under my supervision. I'm not certain of the answer. Okay, the answer is nine. So a dismissal of nine out of 10 counts generally would be troubling. Wouldn't you agree? I, I, I would answer the question by saying, I think the Department of Justice does not bring a count or indeed a prosecution unless we think we can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, when losses happen, you take it to heart, you examine why it occurred. But uh, I don't know if I can say more about uh, a case I didn't supervise than that, sir. Do you know the status of the Chinese nationals who Mr. Chang assisted? No, I'm sorry, sir. This, this case was not under my supervision. Okay. I'm not familiar with the facts at all. All right. My time's expired. I will yield back to the chairman. <laughs>